Thank you. All right, so uh, my name is Wyatt Gooden. Nice to meet all you guys. Thank you guys for uh, coming out and uh, listening to me talk here for an hour. So hopefully it'll be useful to all of you. Um, we're going to be talking about the uh, GT3 series, which is uh, one of the most popular, I guess it's the most popular road series on iRacing. Uh, you've got uh, good competition amongst all four of the uh, cars that you have here. And what's really cool is that each, each of the cars has a uh, very specific handling characteristics, so uh, you can kind of adapt your driving style to each one of these cars here, which is what we'll get into. Uh, this week they're running at Road Atlanta, which is a really fun track, really classic track. You got uh, good passing zones, so always a lot of action on track here. So first thing we'll do here, we'll uh, go out and do a lap, and just kind of go through the uh, line, basic line at Road Atlanta, and then we'll get into the specifics of each car. So the first car we're going out in is the uh, BMW. It's a Z4 GT3. This, uh, if for you guys who run the uh, roadside, run the GT3, you'd know that this is the most popular car um, in the GT3. I'd say it's definitely the easiest to get into. Uh, it's kind of more of your, uh, I guess you'd say typical handling characteristics. It's front engine, rear wheel drive. I think it's got about 515 horsepower. Good power to weight ratio, a little bit lighter than the McLaren. It's a 2,600, 2,640 pounds, I think, something like that. So this is actually, uh, I'm warming up as well. So this is kind of a sensory overload of awesomeness with the AccuForce wheel and the uh, main performance pedals right here. So very nice setup we're using. So here's your passing zone, the back straight. Had uh, lots of great battles here in the sim and in real life, actually. Uh, it's a great, great place to draft by, guys. I've actually, uh, a couple of years ago when I ran F2000 here, had a great battle with a uh, Venezuelan driver, and I think we passed each other twice leading up to the chicane here. It was pretty, pretty incredible racing. All right, so here we go. We're starting to lap, and this is flat out through here. And again, all these cars have ABS, so you really want to make sure you're using all the available brake pressure. We're going to brake right at, at the end of this wall here on the outside. Trailing the brakes through turn one. Turn one is it's deceivingly quick because it's uphill. And uh, so basically the car is going to kind of slow itself down as you go up the hill. Um, you want to get to throttle early here. And uh, we'll get into kind of the specific characteristics of each car. But particularly in the BMW, you're um, you're going to be trailing the brakes deeper into the corners in this car relative to, say, the McLaren or the uh, Porsche, which are both uh, rear engine, rear wheel drive. So third gear here, I think this is turn six. And then turn seven's real tricky, really important corner here because uh, you want to make sure you're taking a late wide apex, really aggressive steering input right as you trail off the brakes. You got to get a good uh, exit off this corner because you got that long straightaway ahead. And if you mess up here, those uh, tents lost are going to add up, which you can see in your delta time. You should get that long straightaway here. So this is this is the, really the most important corner, turn seven, is where you really want to make sure you got good rotation, and uh, most importantly, you have good reference points because uh, there actually is really no brake marker for seven. So we'll do one more lap here and get more specifically into our uh, corner references. So again, BMW probably has the best weight distribution of all cars. It's around 50-50. Uh, I love BMWs. They're always great handling cars. Always, they always rotate well. So again, we're downshifting the fourth right up through the wall here. Immediately looking to our apex early to throttle well before you hit that apex curb. So just carry your speed all the way out here. And this corner is tricky here. I stay to the left, down in the third gear. Use a bit of that curb at the apex. If you do get your left side wheels on this curb right here, you're going to have to roll out of the throttle a little bit. Um, otherwise, the car tends to snap over steer. It really disturbs the balance. This turn five here, late apex, squeeze and throttle early. If you get in full throttle too early in that turn five, uh, you're going to experience understeer. 
And it's really tricky because you have to get off the brake early. So if you're having trouble with, with that corner, it's specifically down to your driving technique. So here you go, second gear. We're, we're gonna get to power really early here. Use all of this exit curving to get a good exit. So that turn five in particular, which is the uphill corner that leads onto that uh, kind of really big ex exit curb that you can use. The trick to that corner is again, you wanna keep the car over to the right hand side. You can use a bit of the curb, particularly in the, in the BMW. This is a good car for using curbing. It handles the curbs pretty well. Uh, get off the brake early and ease in throttle. So right when you get in throttle, you're not gonna be getting into 100% throttle. Otherwise, again, the car is gonna understeer. So if you're having problems in turn five, uh, you're probably just using too much throttle input. So here you go, down in the fourth, we're looking to our apex early, because it's gonna come up quick. And we're staying to the left, preparing for turn two, usually trailing the brakes a little bit, aiming to this apex curve, which you can't see initially, which is why it's so tricky. That's why I love Road Atlanta, just really nothing like it. So here we, here's turn five again. We're gonna stay over to the right-hand side, down into third, ease and throttle early. As you can see my uh, pedal input. Definitely try to pay attention to that because that's real important in these cars. So I'm gonna get into the uh, setup here. Some kind of general things you can do with the uh, BMW to get it to handle a little bit better. So we got the baseline setup loaded here. Um, Pretty much every GT3 car, I'd say the, the base uh, tire pressures you can run, run about 20, 20 even, front and rear. Um, again, this is just for starters, we're not totally fine tuning it, but generally 20 PSI is pretty good. Um, to be honest, as far as hot pressure, you know, I used to uh, try to get that set at a specific number, but um, I later found out that uh, sometimes that's not even the fastest way to go. Um, typically what I'll do is I'll run a little bit lower if I'm running on a track that has more tight corners, uh, a little bit higher on tracks with, with more faster corners. So 20 PSI is a good compromise for that, and uh, it's, it's a good starting point. So I'd say basically you would, you would want to adjust you know, half a pound, a pound at a time in either direction, uh, depending on the circuit, and just give it a shot. I mean, really the way to uh, figure out what the best tire pressures are is just simply trial and error. I mean, that's even how I do it. There's no set hot pressure number that you want to get to. So um, I would just say 20 is a really good starting point. Now, like gotten a handle on the track? Um, that also depends too. For a qualifying setup, I'll run maybe about a pound, pound a pound and a half higher. Cause that way the, the tires will come in around lap two or lap three. Um, but for a long race distance, you want to, ideally you don't want to have your tires be their fastest right in the beginning. That's also a good indicator that you're running too, uh, too high in your tire pressures for a race distance. So that's a good rule of, of thumb too. He asked about tire pressures and knowing when you're at the optimal and how, how many laps it takes. Um, for a race setup, I want to make sure that I can run quick times at least for the first five to ten laps. And for qualifying, usually I'll put maybe two or three gallons of fuel in. And uh, ideally, around lap two or three is when I want the tires to be at their optimal. Um, and that's just going by feel. So like I said, I don't look at uh, my hot pressures anymore as I've learned uh, running eye racing so long. So now in the BMW, um, and this actually goes for all cars as well, uh, I run the ABS at 11. I'm running full ABS on all these cars. And that's actually, um, Something that I've only done recently, starting with, I think it was 2014, season four, where they um, made a change to the ABS. And the car actually would start rotating a lot better on the brakes. So when you're using the full ABS, you can really uh, take advantage of that because you can use more brake pressure and uh, the cars, the tires will still roll pretty freely laterally when you're on under heavy braking. So again, that's my go-to setting. I'm gonna set it at 11 here. Um, I like to have my tracking control around two. Um, I think it's with the BMW, it's, even if you have traction control on, uh, you're most likely gonna spin from mid-corner to corner exit and getting back in throttle. And that's different for the other cars, we'll get into that. But uh, 
Uh, one, I guess I, you could say one negative characteristic about the BMW is when you do lose traction, it happens really quickly and it's really hard to save it. And um, arguably it's a little bit harder to feel when you do lose traction than in some of the other cars, like the uh, Ford GT for instance, and, and I think for sure the rough track. So we're gonna put our ABS at 11 here. Um, I like to run my uh, spring rate pretty low. You can get away with it really low in the BMW. So I usually have the uh, spring split pretty high in the Beamer. Front's at around 926, which is uh, the lowest setting it'll go. Rear's at 411, uh, which I think is like one click from the lowest. Ride heights, generally all the cars I'm running as low as I can get away with in the front. Um, I still, I mean, when I'm looking at the data, I still am not bottoming out. So you definitely want to get that front pin to the ground whenever possible. As long as you're, uh, as long as it's not hitting any curbing, then uh, generally always you want to run the, the front low. So we'll put it, I think it's 1.8 here is as low as we can go. So we'll leave it at that. Um, as far as the rake on these cars, I like to run 2.8 and roughly about 2.4, 2.5 in the rear. And now this depends greatly on which track you're running to. So for instance, a track that you're running with a lot of fast corners, a higher speed track where you really need to run low wing, um, I'll lower the rear ride height to compensate for that uh, less rear wing, therefore less rear downforce in the car. So that less, you know, that smaller amount of rake is gonna help stabilize the car while still maintaining the higher speed benefit that you're gonna be getting from running a uh, lower wing. So road Atlanta, we're um, running relatively low. I think I'm running, at this track, you, you wanna run about, uh, is it about uh, two from the lowest, I believe. So I'll be running about minus one or neutral wing here, which you can see right here. So in the BMW, um, you want to run pretty low wing here. So you can see the lowest we can go is minus three. So we'll go with minus one. Um, generally, I'll have the toe at plus one in front and minus two in the front, rather, plus one in the rear, sorry. Um, ARB, I usually soften it up a little bit. One thing that I do like to do uh, generally every track is running the ARB evenly from the front to the rear. Just gives a good a good stable mid-corner balance, makes the car pretty consistent through the corner. Um, I think the baseline cameras are too high. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those at uh, 0 0.9 in the rear, and we'll go with uh, maybe two, 2.1 in the front. It's also kind of a good go-to standard uh, camber setting to run. Now as far as caster, um, strictly in the BMW, I like to run full caster when I can. It uh, feels like, to me, it makes the car a lot smoother in high-speed corners, a lot easier to, to drive, and it rotates better um, with less steering input. So the more cast you have, the more you're going to jack the weight of the car with less steering input. So you can steer the car a little bit less, and you're going to get better rotation. It really helps in the high speed. Um, generally, I'll run lower caster at a track, uh, even a street circuit or a track with really tight corners. Say at Long Beach, you want to run less caster because you're going to need to get a lot of quick rotation and a lot of quick steering input to kind of arc the car through the corners. Um, and you'll find if you're running too much caster at a track uh, with tight corners, it will actually, uh, the car will snap over steer easier on you. So if you're having trouble with that, you could also uh, lower the caster there. So we'll go with nine. I think the highest is 10. That's a good compromise there. Uh, let's see, ARB, we'll keep those both small, and again, we're running our toe in, run that at uh, minus two. Some of this stuff will change too when you're running, when you change the cambers pretty drastically, so definitely make sure that you recheck the toe after you change the cambers. So we've got max feel in here, but that's okay. Um, the differential preload is also a pretty important setting to use. Uh, basically, higher diff is going to allow for is it more rotation on throttle. Uh, 
yeah, more rotation on throttle and more understeer off throttle. Um, that's kind of a setting that you can also counter with damper settings, with shock settings. I'm not going to get into that just yet, but a good starting point for the differential is about 75. Um, some tracks where I don't want as much rotation and on throttle in faster corners are typically tighter tracks. I like to have better rotation on throttle on tracks with longer corners um, because you're getting in throttle sooner and you, you have to roll that momentum while you're in throttle early. So the differential increasing that uh, preload will help the car rotate better through longer radius, faster corners. That's, that's kind of my general rule for that. So that's kind of the gist of basically making a setup for the BMW. And uh, I do use high friction brake pads generally. Um, from, I think from running formula cars for so many years where I'm really used to uh, utilizing all of the braking power with the additional downforce that I have on initial braking, I like to really get on the brake hard. So if I could, sh if I could show you on a data trace my braking curve, it's gonna look like a spike. So right when I get on the brake, it's instantly to 100, and then I'm trailing off gradually. And depending on the corner, it's going to be a long trail off if it's a high radius corner, or it's going to be a quick release of the brakes in a uh, hairpin corner. And that's going to help me get the car rotated. So we'll go ahead and do another lap here in the BMW, then we'll switch over. Um, I generally run 48. Who asked the question? Yeah, 48. Yeah, roughly 48 to 48.7, I think, is a good, pretty much standard for what I use. I don't use a really rearward brake bias like a lot of people do, um, because I like to really be able to get to force my car to rotate on the brakes. I don't want the car to turn for me too easily. Um, and that also helps me be a lot smoother. When I can, when I can get on the brakes and the car isn't going to twitch over really quickly, with too rearward of a brake bias, it would. So if I'm running higher, like 48, 48, 7, um, I'm really able to control the weight transfer and really use the steering angle to, to get the car pitched over sm more smoothly. That's what I found. And now that brake bias does heavily depend on how much a ABS you're using. Um, the less ABS you're using, I think the more rearward your brake bias is. That's why I think the default setup was ABS at 9 and then the bias is at 40.4 or something. But I have it on 11 and I'm using 48.6. 48.4 right now. So again, squeezing and throttle here. It's going to help that car rotate. And you'll feel it too. I mean, you want to really, uh, you know, try to be aware of how easy the car is to get to rotate under certain, uh, depending on how much input you're giving in throttle. That's really important. That's how you are going to adjust the set the setup to the way you want it to be. So again, we're running, I think, was it two clicks from minimum rear wing in this car. So that's, uh, that's going to give us enough straight line speed to not just get blown by on the straightaway here, but we're also going to have good, good downforce for turn one, which is a really critical corner. So a really good turn in here with this setup now. And I set up my cars to be stable and fast. I don't, I don't like my setups to be ridiculously loose. That's also how I would set up cars in, in real life, and it uh, allows me to be a bit smoother. So trail braking into one, trailing off the brakes, look into this apex right here, squeezing in throttle, got good rotation. And a little bit of trail braking here, aiming to that uh, apex curb there. And again, if you get up on this curb, you really got to be careful because the car can snap spin very easily. So. Definitely want to be aware of how much throttle you're using at all times. That's why it's really important to have a good pedal set. That helps a lot. Um, but uh, that's how you're going to tune a setup to your liking. Once you know exactly what you're doing behind the wheel, that's going to help a lot. So all right, we'll go ahead and switch to our next car here, and we'll uh, make a new setup for it. So we'll try the uh, Ford GT. You guys got any questions? Regarding the uh, BMW? No, you guys good? Okay. So the 4 GT is actually, uh, it's really been improved for this last season, which is nice. Um, as far as the balance of performance, I think they dropped a bunch of weight on it. It was either 45 kilograms or 45 pounds, I believe. And uh, oh, here we go. 
load this up through here. I think that's right. But anyway, yeah, so the 4 GT uh, is really competitive this season, and it's actually uh, a lot of fun to drive, too. It's one of my favorite cars from testing. I hadn't, hadn't really got into it before this, but I, I had found that I was actually running uh, very similar times to what I, was, what I could do in the BMW here. I think in the BMW I did a 16.9, and uh, my best in the 4 GT was a 17.1. And I think with more practice and more development of the setup, I could uh, possibly get into the 16s with it. So by no means is it a, is it a slouch. It's not uh, you know, completely uncompetitive. It's just, it just takes a little bit more work. Uh, I think the B BMW, you know, it's so popular because it's just a really easy car to get into, really, really well balanced, really good handling. Uh, Ford GT will take a little bit more effort, but uh, if that's, you know, if you like the car, then you know, there's nothing holding you back from running it and being competitive. So this, the, the Ford has some nuances too that you gotta kind of adapt to. Uh, one of them being the car is just going to, it's naturally gonna be a lot stiffer than the BMW, therefore uh, a little bit more unpredictable over the curbs. And at a track like Road America, especially here, you gotta be real careful uh, about that because these curbs can really kind of throw the car around quite a bit. All right, so. We've got our uh, Ford GT setup here. Not quite as many uh, setup options you got on here. It's traction control you got either on or off, so we'll keep that at two. But now this one, the traction control only goes in increments from one to three, whereas the BMW had a little bit more. So this is the baseline setup we got loaded here. We'll go ahead and adjust this. We'll, keep, we'll run full fuel just to keep a constant. Uh, so again, same thing here with this car. Uh, I like running it at the, with the brake bias at 11. So I'll go ahead and put the, the brake bias at 48.4. Uh, got the ABS at 11, rather, that's what I meant. Uh, again, you got your ARB. Now, you also want to be aware when you're making changes um, what the actual values are and the setup changes. For instance, the 4GT is only going to go up in the rear ARB from softest being 1 to stiffest being 4. And the front is going to be, uh, was it one to four as well? Okay. I thought, that was, I thought it was going higher. That must be the McLaren. I'm getting my cars confused here. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and run, uh, we'll keep it even at two. It's gonna make that ARB a little bit softer. Car will roll a little bit better mid corner and the medium speed faster corners here. We'll keep the traction control on at two. Now the ride heights are gonna be a little bit different in this car too. Uh, it just naturally sits a little bit higher. So again, we're going to go to minimum ride heights, which is about what we're at already. And uh, leave our rear ride height at 2.7. Go up maybe a little bit here. Try to keep a consistent rig. So now your spring rate settings are going to be a lot different in this car too. So uh, the, the baseline spring rates are pretty good. Uh, you got the front is actually, this, okay, it can go up to... A thousand. Now in this car what I found is that um, I, just, I just can't get the same amount of lateral grip when I start lowering my spring rates. Uh, the car, the 4GT already lacks corner speed, lateral traction. That's where it's more at a disadvantage to the BMW. So we can't really run it too much lower because we're just going to lose corner speed in that case. Um, now the big advantage in this car is the top end. So we can run this car is, is naturally more understeery, so we can run much lower wing here. So we'll actually go ahead and put the wing all the way down to the lowest setting. And uh, a track like this is actually where the Ford GT is gonna be a little bit more competitive because it does have the top speed advantage. So you can take advantage of that on the straightaway here. Okay, now camber. Um, and again, well actually I never went into this, but this is how I adjust my camber. Um, I'm basically just looking at tread wear. That's, the only thing I'm going by, I honestly don't read too much into tire temperatures. Um, whenever you're getting off the track, you've got to keep in mind that if you, you spun out or you slid or you slow down early, your temps are going to even out a little bit more and uh, it might not be as accurate. So when you do want to read your tire temperatures, ideally pull off the track right after you've taken a certain corner at the normal speed that you would be taking it at. That's going to give you the most accurate readout. But um, anyway, so I'm looking at tread wear for uh, 
when I'm adjusting cameras, and generally I like to have the fronts wearing evenly, maybe a lower percentage than the outside. So for instance, once I have the outside at 99 and the middle and inside at 98, then I know I'm right in the ballpark. And that's generally pretty much close enough. Um, if I'm really trying to get fast, I'll run a lot more, I'll do a lot more testing. But that's how you can get within the general area of where you should be regarding cambers in the front and the rear. So again, it's about, you know, you want to have one higher percentage in the front. You want to have the, the middle and inside roughly equal. That's kind of a good reference to go by. All right, so I'm just, I'm just going to even out my spring split here. I'm going to run the same uh, front spring rate as I am in the rear. So I lower the rear, so I'm going to raise the ride height up a little bit in the rear and keep that same amount of rate that I had. So I'll do 2.75 would be good. Okay, as far as cambers in the 4GT, I'm going to have a little bit more rear camber in this car too than in the BMW. So we'll go ahead and do a couple laps here and, and I'll show you again how I uh, adjust my cambers. All right, so 4GT, we're running the rear wing as low as it can go. And uh, we can actually get away with the standard gears here as well. Now with this track in particular, um, you can use either the standard or the tall gears in the 4 GT. Uh, if you use the tall, you're going to be a little bit lower in your RPM range in sixth gear, but tall would be what you'd want to use in a race, because once you start getting a draft, that's when you're going to hit the limiter. So standard is good for qualifying, tall is good for if you know you're going to be running in traffic. You know, if you think you're going to stay out front and win by a huge margin, then standard would be the way to go, because sixth gear is going to be a little bit more optimal at the end of the straightaway. So again, we got our tire pressure set at 20, which is uh, our standard kind of go-to starting point. We've got our front and our rear AB, uh, ARBs uh, even. And again, I'm using high pressure here. So see that my toe must have changed. So I'll keep that at minus one in the, in the front and plus one in the rear. We'll go with plus two in the 4GT. So it's a little bit more unstable. So again, we've got the uh, much higher spring rate in this car. It's going to be a little bit stiffer, a little bit more unpredictable for the bumps. So you really got to be careful, especially here. If you get those left side wheels on that curb, uh, you're really unsettling the car. So I would recommend making sure you're in maybe 50, 60% throttle until you get off that curb. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to deal with a lot of oversteer. And uh, you don't really wanna be dealing with too much oversteer in a race. If you're gonna risk uh, spinning out and crashing. In this car, you do have to blip the throttle on downshift. So we're shifting at about 7,000 RPM here. And again, so the advantage of the 4GT at a track like Road Atlanta, uh, you're going to be carrying a little bit more speed down the straightaway. And our reference for braking here, right at that billboard, pretty much in every car. And uh, the chicane here at Road Atlanta is a little tricky. You got to just uh, make sure when you hit that second apex, there's a little dip in the apex if you turn in too early. And you don't want to be in full throttle when you get over that because it's just going to unsettle the rear end. So blip and throttle, look into our apex really early. We want to get those right side tires on that inside curb. Really, really back to throttle in turn one, because again, uphill, the car is going to kind of slow down by itself. So you want to take advantage of that and get in throttle before you start going uphill. That way you'll be carrying your, your momentum. So again, our tricky turn five, easing in throttle. It's going to allow the car to rotate. Uh, if you could see my steering input, if you look on the uh, little graph there on the left side. I'm not giving it much steering input. Um, if I'm giving it too much steering input, then I know I've given too much throttle because I want the car to be easy to rotate. So you'll see I have a very minimal steering input with about half throttle. 
through turn five, and that's going to allow the car to rotate uh, better. It's hard to shift when I can't hear the engine. <laughs> so again, a little bit more top speed in this car. Uh, it's, it has good turn in under braking, sometimes almost too good. Like right here, when you get off the brakes, it kind of whips around really quickly. And that's wh why I run my spring split pretty even. It kind of settles out a little bit. Uh, if you find the car does rotate a little bit too much on uh, turn in, you can... Uh, there's a number of things you can do, and I'll get into that here. So really back to throttle. Ideally, you want to have those left side wheels almost out on the grass here. And I stay over to the left. A lot of people have different lines for this, but I've always run that way. I just feel like it sets me up for that chicane better. I don't like going all the way over to the right and then left. So you want to make a straight line break-in zone before you hit that chicane. All right, so I'll get into a few more changes that I uh, like to make in the 4GT. All right, so the uh, differential preload is also pretty good for this car. Um, 75 is pretty good. See, depending on where you're finding that you might be losing control in the car in the corner, uh, adjusting the diff is a good, a good compromise. Now the difference between adjusting the diff and, ad and adjusting, um, say, the dampers for weight transfer, I like to adjust the dampers after I've gotten the differential to where I let want it to be. Uh, I adjust the differential based on how I want the car to rotate, more so in medium to high speed corners. Um, if I'm finding that uh, in low speed corners I have understeer, I'll, uh, that's when I'll start getting into shock tuning, and it's pretty complicated. but. Um, Basically, my, my rule of thumb is uh, more front bump and more rear rebound when I want to get the car stabilized under braking on turning. And that's going to basically prevent the car from transferring weight as much under braking. It's going to keep that rear end pinned to the ground. And again, that's increasing your front bump and your rear rebound will do that. So that'll uh, slow down that weight transfer and it will slow down uh, that transition of weight to the front of the car, it'll make the car a little bit easier to manage on turn-in. It's not going to be as snappy on turn-in because you're lowering the center of gravity in the rear. And uh, on throttle, say from uh, mid-corner off in a medium, lower speed corner typically, uh, if I want the car to be more stable when I get in throttle, I will adjust the front rebound and rear bump. So I would increase the front rebound and incre increase the rear bump to uh, slow down that weight transfer when I get in throttle, keep the uh, rear pin to the ground when I'm in throttle, and uh, that's gonna stabilize the car. And again, that's just, uh, that's just low speed rebound and bump. So low speed is for weight transfer, high speed is strictly for um, getting the car a little bit more stable in uh, fast bumps, so over curbs. So I usually don't need to mess with the high speed bump and rebound too much. Um, Unless I'm on a really bumpy circuit, say Long Beach, with a good shock setup, you can uh, definitely make the car a lot easier to drive over the bumps. Uh, it's not necessarily going to make you faster, it'll just make the car easier to drive, so you know, that could in turn make you more uh, consistent, of course. So here we go, we got pretty, pretty decent cambers as you can see, you got 100% uh, left on the, the outside and then you've got the middle and inside at 99, and on all four tires it's pretty good. Uh, Looks like our temps are pretty good too. And again, I, I don't go as much by the temps, but it is, it's kind of nice to have the middle, and ins, the middle and inside even, or even the inside maybe a degree higher than the middle. So that's what I shoot for. So, you know, again, when, when you see that, you know you're pretty much in the ballpark. Uh, and it's really not, you know, fine tuning that is not gonna gain you much time. That's why I really, you know, you know, driving line and, and technique is what's going to gain you seconds. Um, fine tuning those things in the setup once you're already in the ballpark is not going to gain you much more than, you know, a couple tenths or so. So that's pretty much the gist of setup adjustment in the 4GT. Um, I think at this track in particular, I was running my diff preload at about 55, and that was uh, getting the car to uh, turn in a little bit better off-throttle. So that was, that was kind of what I was using there. 
So, all right, that's the 4GT. We'll get into the McLaren here next. Load that one up. Now, McLaren is probably the, uh, well, arguably the hardest car to drive, I think. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Certainly drives a lot different than these two uh, front engine cars. Of course, the McLaren being rear engine. Uh, McLaren does have the most horsepower. So I think it's around 550 horsepower. And uh, it's also the heaviest. I think it's 2,720 pounds or so. So the McLaren, uh, a little bit more popular. You see this car racing and competing against the uh, BMW a little bit more often. This car is really good over one lap, too. Uh, just really, really fast. It rotates really well. I'd say its biggest advantage is in high-speed corners, uh, really well balanced. The thing is, the, the, the window of optimal traction in this car is a bit smaller, and when you get out of that window, that's when you're going to get into trouble. So that's generally why it's considered harder to drive. A little bit less margin for error, I guess you could say. Personally, to me, this car drives the most like a formula car, um, being rear engine, of course, but uh, pretty much the opposite technique of the BMW is what is required for the McLaren, which is really interesting because uh, it's, you know, to, to be able to go back and forth from one car to the other, you really have to adapt your driving style, uh, which is just going to come with practice and, and building awareness to what you're doing behind the wheel. So all right, we're loading our baseline here. So again, we'll adjust this. And again, we're going to keep our front ride heights at minimum. We've got a full tank of gas. McLaren also holds more fuel. And I'm not exactly sure, but I, I believe it burns the most fuel. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. The uh, 4GT also burns a little bit less fuel than the McLaren. So we'll increase our rake a bit here. Now, from testing the McLaren at this track, what I found is that I need to run a little bit more wing, uh, really to keep that back end more settled, because it's so touchy at times. So what I'll do when I run more wing is I will run, uh, I'll run a higher weight rake to compensate. Uh, and that's because since I'm adding that rear stability, the aero stability and, and medium speed, faster corners, uh, I need to get better turn in to compensate that so it doesn't hurt me too much in the low speed corners. So again, whenever I'm, whenever I'm increasing the rear downforce, I'm also going to be increasing the rear uh, ride height as well. So that's our rake adjustment. So let's see, the McLaren, this is the car that has a different adjustment for the front ARV versus the rear. So incrementally the front goes from one being the softest to four being the stiffest, and the rear will go all the way up to six. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind. If you're trying to run even ARBs in this car, you got to keep that in mind that uh, you have a little bit more values in the rear. So what I found, I like to run this, the front pretty soft. Um, again, this is to kind of counterbalance my uh, higher rear downforce. Front soft, it's going to make the car, the front end kind of pitch and roll a little bit quicker. It's going to give me a little bit better rotation of the apex. So we'll put the the rear at four, keep the, the rear nice and stiff here. And I'm gonna take my spring split a little bit closer to neutral. Now this car you can't adjust asymmetrically, which is good because you're not really gonna wanna do that on a road course anyway, it's just overcomplicating things. Um, and also for those of you that run Lime Rock, um, that's a track with a lot of right-hand corners, so. Even on Lime Rock, for instance, I usually don't run asymmetric. I found that it's not really worth the effort to try to get that to work, because it seems to uh, kind of balance itself out as far as times. If you know, if you know Lime Rock, you've got all but one corner are uh, right-handers. And uh, when you run an asymmetric setup, say your cambers, say you've got almost positive inside front camber, well, you won't be able to get through turn three very well and then you end up losing the tenth or two that you gain in the other corners. So generally run, um, uh, generally run symmetric everywhere. Now, let's see. Now this car, what I do with the diff preload, I like to run it a little bit lower because this car has really bad off throttle over understeer. Sorry, it, so it's not going to turn very well on the brakes. Um, so by lowering the diff preload. 
the car is going to be able to rotate a little bit better off throttle and that's going to kind of counteract that uh, natural tendency that this car has to uh, understeer on the brakes. So we're going to, again, put our ABS up to 11. Personal preference, uh, but you know, try it for yourself, see what you like. Uh, personally, I like full ABS. I feel like I have a better feel for the brakes and I don't have to worry about locking up. And as far as I can tell, there's no disadvantage to using full ABS. So you've got it, you might as well use it. So again, we'll run at 48.5 here. Uh, take our toe down to minus one. Don't want it to be too dramatic. In this car, I run equal cambers. It helps keep the rear a little bit more stable and still gives me good traction in the front. Because again, this car has a tendency to really, the front end really wants to point where you, where you put it. So in this particular car, uh, turn-in sensitivity is important. You really gotta, if, if you have a tendency to throw the car in on turn-in, then you're gonna have trouble getting used to this one because uh, this, corner, this car, you have to be really smooth with your turn-in, really subtle, and you have to turn in off the brakes, otherwise it's gonna snap over steer. Uh, it's gonna snap over steer on entry. So the BMW has a tendency to snap over steer from mid-corner off on throttle, but this car, again, almost being complete opposite in handling characteristics, it will have a tendency to snap over steer on on the brakes, on turn it, so mid corner. All right, so we've got our rake set. We got about a half or a 0 0.6, 0.7 inch uh, rake right there, which is pretty good. We got full fuel. We'll go ahead and put our diff preload down to roughly 60. Uh, standard gears, I think, are good in this car too. And again, equal cambers all around. That's what I recommend on the uh, McLaren. It's a good starting point. Spring split, we've got a 100 degree or 100 pound spring split, less than the front. High friction pads, again, all the cars I, I'm running full ABS and high, bri high friction brake pads. Also, I like to have my throttle shape at 10. That's what I run in all cars. I like to have the linear curve. I think basically if you're running the lower throttle shaping, that's when you're gonna start to get more of a exponential curve on your throttle. That's gonna look more like this and having it at 10 is going to be more linear. So based on the amount of travel you're, you're giving it, you're going to have a more, well, for me anyway, it's more predictable because that's what I'm used to. All right, so we'll go out on track with McLaren. So turn two is probably the trickiest corner in the McLaren. Um, because you're off throttle and you're turning in. And again, as I was saying before, that's when this car is really tricky. Um, I was running minimum wing in this car and I was pretty much the same speed. But what I was finding was that turn two, the car was way more unstable, or heading into turn two, I should say, which is that left-hander before the chicane. So basically in this car, the, the, the general driving technique and the difference is that you want to be off the brake when you start turning in in this car. Whereas in the BMW, and to a lesser extent in the Ford GT, uh, the BMW loves trail braking. Uh, you've got to rotate that car on the brakes. So that means that you are turning in when you're increasing your steering input, you're on the brakes, you're maintaining brake input as you're turning in. Now you're decreasing your, your braking input sim simultaneously as you're increasing your steering input. Um, and that's what trail braking is. That transition from braking G's to lateral cornering G's uh, and keeping the, keeping the tires in that optimal traction circle. So to do that in this car, you've got to be off the brake right when you turn in. Kind of a quick release of the brakes and a quick turn in is ideal. That's going to give you that, the ideal uh, amount of rotation. I guess I should say the most rotation you could possibly be getting. And that's more similar to Formula car driving versus uh, typical sedans, especially front wheel drive. Obviously, you're trail braking a lot. Formula cars, um, any of you guys drive the Star Mazda, you know that uh, you can't trail the brakes or you'll just spin usually. So you've got to get hard on the brakes initially, really quick release of the brakes, 
And right as you release the brakes is when you turn in, and you're gonna find that sweet spot. Now you gotta practice it, but you're gonna find, if you're paying attention, you'll uh, be able to feel it when the car is kind of pitching to the apex quicker. And it's all about timing. It's all about timing your uh, brake release and turning. So again, McLaren, hard initial braking, straight line braking, aiming to the apex. Right as you start to turn in, you release the brakes. That's gonna give you good rotation. And again, BMW, uh, basically complete opposite. You're gonna be braking hard, but as, as you start to turn in, you still wanna remain on the brakes, just trailing off the brake gradually. This car is really fun into turn one. Just feels really on the edge. You gotta be real precise with it. This is where it can be tricky. Any kind of turning through a medium high speed corner off the uh, off throttle in this car can be pretty, pretty sketchy. So I'm getting the, the car to rotate through that corner really well because I am, again, not in full throttle. And that's uh, pretty much in every car at Road Atlanta, that's kind of the, the technique, that's the way to get, uh, get through turn uh, five there. So off the brake early. Now this corner, or this car too, in turn seven, you'll find that you'll get a lot of understeer if you try to brake late into turn seven. Excuse me, because if you're braking late, uh, in this car, then you're going to have to be continuing your braking input as you turn in, and that's when you're going to get understeer. So that's really the main uh, difference in the handling with this car, is that if you, if you brake late, be prepared to get understeer unless you can get off the brake early. Because if you brake late and you try to continue slowing the car down to the apex, it's not going to rotate very well, and you're going to lose time. You're not going to get the uh, front end position to the apex quick enough. So turn one here, go down the fourth, off the brakes. Car's rolling through the corner. Really good, really good rotation off the brakes. Turn two here, really tricky. Be really careful with your steering input. Off the brakes as I go over the curb. And this curb's pretty tricky too, again, in every car. So if you do, you can use it, but you really have to be aware when you got your left side tires on it because it will uh, spin you around really easily if you're using too much throttle and you have a little bit of steering input through that corner. So hard braking here, and you have to release right when you turn in. And you can kind of see, I'll, I'll go around and do that corner one more time, because that one's really important. In this, in this car, that's the trickiest. The trickiest thing is the low speed corners, uh, I mean, regarding gaining time, because you know, naturally you want to brake late through there and get a good, uh, really attack that corner. but. You've got to kind of back up your braking a little bit and uh, get off the brake right as you turn in. So we'll go ahead and do turn seven here one more time and we'll switch over to the uh, rough roof, however you want to say it. So low speed corner cornering, <clears throat> similar to uh, driving a formula car where you don't want to trail brake. Uh, that's very true in this car as well. So that turn seven, that's what we're gonna focus on here for this lap. So that turn seven, uh, most all of your braking done in a straight line, and when you get right about to the point where you wanna turn in, you're releasing the brakes, and right as you completely release off the brakes is when you wanna turn in. And uh, you practice that, and I guarantee you'll uh, understand why I'm saying that, because the car is gonna pitch into the apex a lot better. So here you go, turn six. And then seven, we're hard on the brakes, release the brakes and turn in. They give us really good rotation there. Allow us to get back to throttle really early. And that's kind of the uh, gist of the McLaren. So when you know how these cars drive and you know your driving style and what you like, that's when you can really start to uh, tune the setup and it will actually benefit you. So that's why I always tell people it's important to, um, it's important to know what you want, want out of the car and know how the car is supposed to drive, or the, the handling characteristics of the car. Um, so that's about it for the McLaren. So again, 11 ABS on all cars, what I recommend. And you know, general rake to use for all cars, you can pretty much use 0.7 from front to rear, rather. So this one, say, lowest is 
2.7, 2.8, and I got the rear at 3.5. Uh, spring split in this car, I like to run either even spring split or maybe one click lower in the front. And again, in the 4 GT, I like to run an even spring split. The BMW, you are running uh, much higher in the front than in the rear, but, all, but both of the spring rates at minimum, and you can adjust the rear accordingly. You can go up one or two clicks would be fine, depending on the track. If the track has a lot of hills, say for instance a track like Sonoma uh, in the BMW, I would run the rear spring rate a little bit softer um, and make my setup based, based around that. So that's pretty much it as far as the McLaren. Anyone have any uh, questions regarding the McLaren? Um, I have a, kind of a little more general question. Mm -hmm. You are um, way, way higher than the one percentile of high racer Mm -hmm. As you come down a few points, are there any things that, that, that should change or should, should, does this apply straight to, to somebody not quite Um No, I mean, I, it, it definitely applies to everyone. His question was, uh, does, the, does my knowledge and setup adjusting apply to drivers that are slower? And I think it absolutely does. Um, because I, I like to make my setups stable and easy to drive, because I feel like that allows me to be consistent. So for the most part, I mean, I'm not trying to make a setup that's you know, crazy, oversteer, loose, I'm dirt track in the car through every corner. But um, for the most part, I'm just, I try to get a really consistent balance. And it, the same applies for real life driving too, so. But now in the, McLaren, what I found is that if you try to make the setup too stable, uh, it will actually, it'll make it harder to drive and harder to learn the right technique um, because you're gonna get more snap over steer. And if you have an understeery setup, so a setup that's like too stable, what you end up doing is you're using too much steering input and then you're binding up the front end and then the car is gonna be more prone to snap over steer. So then you're gonna, you know, you're binding up the front and then once those fronts give, you're gonna be you know, correct in trying to save the car and it's gonna to be too late at that point. So that's why, I mean, you know, even if you're, just, if you're not fast, uh, it's important to have a well-balanced car. That's uh, always gonna be beneficial. It's always gonna be more easy to drive that way. All right, so last car here, we'll get into the rough track, which is uh, mid-engine rear-wheel drive. So a little bit more similar to the um, McLaren. Definitely a little bit easier to handle than the McLaren. Um, I'd say the rough track is, uh, it's got its biggest advantage at tracks with a lot of tight corners. Um, say a track like Circuit of the Americas where you've got a lot of tight hairpins. Uh, and the reason being because the car has such good low speed uh, rotation. And uh, again, technique for this car is quite a bit different from the BMW. So it's not, again, this one, uh, similarly to the McLaren, it's not so much a trail braking car. Uh, you're actually gonna get most of your rotation done when you get back to throttle. And also similarly to the McLaren, you need to uh, release the brakes early in this car. So this is not a heavy trail braking car. All right, so rough track. Again, we'll start with the baseline here. Uh, tire pressures, again, you can start out at 20 all around. Some people like to run a little bit higher in the front than the rear. Uh, that depends on the track, too. At a faster track, if I'm trying to get a little bit more stability, sometimes I'll run a little bit higher in the front than the rear. Okay. All right, we'll go through this one real quick here. We're just about, about to wrap up. So uh, ABS setting, again, uh, 11 is what I prefer, personal preference, but definitely try that out for yourself. And when I'm running at 11, pretty much run the same bias, so 48 region is good. Uh, now this, this car has a much different spring split than uh, the other cars. Default's pretty good, 800 and 11. Uh, depending on the track, if the track isn't super bumpy, I'll run 800 and 1200. Uh, track like Road Atlanta, 1100, a little bit softer in the rear, can't hurt. Uh, I will say the main one thing that I, I do like running in this car is a little bit lower caster. I like to have it at about five. 
So you're not going to be running max caster like you would in the BMW. Um, so 9, you want to run that about 4, 9 to 5, that area. What that's going to do is that's going to make the... I feel like it's, it makes the car a little bit easier to, to manage um, when you got to make quick steering inputs. You don't want this car to be as... You don't want to run as much high caster in this car in the BMW because of the way it rotates on throttle. And I find that with higher caster, it's harder to catch a slide with this car because this car already has really good rotation. And uh, you know, as I said, with the BMW, I like running higher caster because I have more direct, smooth turn in, especially for faster corners. So kind of a general rule for me is to run uh, caster a little bit lower in the uh, rough track. Makes it a lot easier to, to turn in and manage that really abrupt turn in that this car has, as well as uh, uh, counter steering makes it a lot easier because when you're counter steering with lower caster it's not jacking the weight so quickly so you're not going to get such a snappy um, I guess you could say correction when you when you are oversteering it makes it a little bit easier to to control it with smaller inputs so as far as ride heights usually I run a little bit more rake in this car so we'll run about do about 4.5 Pretty good. Again, this is just kind of a starting point for the uh, for the rough track here. All right, so we're just about to wrap up, so I'll just get through the rest of this here real quick. Um, I do run more aero in this car in general. Uh, at Road Atlanta, I'd say I'd run about six. So you really don't want to run minimum wing here. Let's see, I forgot what it goes down to. It goes all the way down to one. So most tracks, I would run it pretty high, maybe about 12 to 15. Uh, usually no gurney flap, unless you're running at a track like, say, VIR, where you need to have that uh, rear end stability. Because this car rotates so good, it turns in so good, that you do need to have that rear end planted to really be able to take advantage of the good turn in rotation that this car has. So keep our spring split where it's at. Uh, and cambers in this car are a little bit different than the other cars, too run a little bit more camber in this car. Default's pretty good, pretty good starting point. Don't really need to venture too far from there. I usually like to have about 0.2 less in the rear than the front. And a good adjustment for rear stability and rear traction in those cars is to adjust the rear camber to be closer to neutral with the front so you can get away with that too. So you could run 2.7 front, 2.7 rear, and you'll really notice a change in just lowering the rear camber like one or two clicks. So that's something that you can try for yourself too. Um, and I'd start with the, the ARBs about equal. That's usually what I do generally when I'm starting in a setup and I just kind of go from there. So again, this car is more similar to the McLaren and the uh, BMW because uh, usually minus, minus one or two in the front. Sometimes I'll, I'll run a little bit more like minus three if the track has a lot of low speed corners. If it's a track like VIR or Long Beach, I'll run a little bit more front toe to get that really take advantage of that really direct initial turn in that this car has. That's the advantage this car has. That's why it's so good at, especially at tighter tracks. So again, this car, different from the BMW and the Ford in that you are getting most of your rotation done on throttle, not on the brakes. So you release the brakes, and that's when you're going to feel that rotation in this car. And maintain that rotation with throttle. So get on that throttle pedal really soon. But not full throttle. You want to get in throttle maybe about 40-50% at the apex. And just maintain that smooth arc, smooth rotation. So again, same braking point here for all cars. and break it at that billboard there. So off throttle, the car rotates really good as soon as you get off the brake. If you're braking too deep into the corner as you start turning in, you're going to get understeer. Uh, not quite as dramatic as the McLaren, but pretty similar. Because again, neither of these cars are front engine, so they kind of have similar characteristics. So really to throttle in turn one, take advantage of that uphill. And you can go ahead and shortcut this corner if you want. No, I was, I was obviously intentionally doing that. 
So yeah, release the brakes, really to throttle, rolling and throttle really smooth, if you can see my throttle input there. So, but yeah, so they're all good cars, all uh, equally capable of being fast, so just, you know, with uh, that in mind, you can just drive whatever uh, feels most comfortable and is more, most fun to drive for you. So I guess that about wraps it up. All right, thank you very much, Wyatt.